Hello everyone, Game Master Toneshift here. Now, before I let you move on to listen to this session, I'm afraid I need to bring something to your attention. See, when we were sitting down to play this session, I, in all of my limitless wisdom, forgot to do a proper sound check in my recording software. And as a result, the entire session was recorded with not a peep of my voice. So... All of my narration, all of the NPC dialogue, any of the vocal goosh foley sound effects that I make, like opening doors or media impacts during combat, everything like that was lost. It was just the players. Naturally, in its base state, that is basically useless. But to help compensate for this unfortunate turn of events, Rosa's player, Tom117Z, has... Uh, gone above and beyond the Call of Duty to help trim things down, trim out the long silences caused by me, uh, but, or rather that were due to me doing narration at the time, and I have taken it upon myself to re-record some of those things, mostly in the form of vocal narration, to just provide summaries of what was lost so that there is context and so that you're not completely confused and lost as to what is happening. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to be at all as good as the session would be if you were just listening to it in its raw, unedited format, but unfortunately, that's not really an option anymore, now is it? Uh, and I've also taken the time to re-record some of the dialogue from certain NPCs to try and recreate some of the scenes that were lost. Uh, it's not going to be perfect. The conversations are pretty much just going to be inserted with me speaking in the character's voice to provide a context and narration. And that's the best we can do right now. I I'm really, really sorry for this mishap. It was totally my fault, a byproduct of me being negligent and oblivious to what was happening around me. I will not make any excuses. I'm just going to say I'm going to do my damnedest not to let it happen again. So, the way this session wound up starting, the party did as they promised at the end of the previous one after Kunara emerged from that strange tent and went to purchase fish for Kunara to entice her to stick with the group. Hi. Okay, <laughs> I don't know. Um... Uh... So, Kara, you wanted fish, right? Now that you're done with your super mysterious evil escapades in the tent. Do you have a lover? What? <laughs> I don't know, Wait. like, because uh, Zona was really into you, and I don't know. Never mind. Fish is over here. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What did you say? A city on an island surrounded by water made mostly by cats. Yeah, there's not, never going to be fish in here. Never. Is there no, like, <laughs> barrel of water that they can this has been their head in for fish? Candy apples. <laughs> apples will... Well, well it's an island of cats. So, Cassandra, this is a fishing village. Technically, it was a fish that caused the amber plague. So... You know, kind of a, a mixed history with fish. Don't worry, I'm sure that can't happen again. Probably. But yeah. Alright. And Gil, here you go. Kanar, fish. Mm. Fish, Koopa. <laughs> yes, I shall eat well tonight. Do you, uh. I take mm. it you, like, cook that, right? Hey, on. No licking the fins. But. But why, Koopa? Because he just said why. Does it taste like a lollipop, Koopa? I am. What's fish taste like, Koopa? You never had fish? No, Koopa? Yeah. Um, getting him to eat anything that's not loaded with sugar is like trying to get a dog to eat broccoli. Uh, no offense, Gunnar. Mm. <laughs> <Koopa>. <laughs> well, I imagine it doesn't taste very much like a lollipop. Can I put ice cream on it, Koopa? Oh my god. Maybe. Koopa! Yeah, I think when Kai heard that, she's like, <laughs> 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 Well, whenever you do decide to have fish, I'm afraid this one is mine. We can't uh. hear, Koopa? Well, Unfortunately, 
No. I'm sure we can find a place to cook it up later, but for now, I believe there are other things to see. Mm -hmm. e Aeon, where do yes. you want to go, Koopa? Games? Koopa games! Koopa games! Games, Koopa! Why did I imagine a, the flapping of the freaking arms? <laughs> and flapping of arms and wings! <laughs> For the record, Rosa, yes, I know how to cook. That's good then. Uh, so, yes, there's a story circle that we run back to the library. I kind of like that one. I run it a fair bit. Uh, the mud pit, where we just kind of throw mud. Kind of cool. Oh, good. Mm. <laughs> chocobo race. There's lots of chocobos. Fluffy's never taken part, but maybe. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a scavenger hunt if you like finding rope. Eat the rope! The rope! Go for The rope! Go for <laughs> Oh my god. Just an average piece of rope. It's one of the items, it's a whole thing. You can read this if you want. She kind of brings out the Chronicles of Eno and just shoves it forward. Uh. Fair enough. You it's can very, hold on to that. It's a very long book with a lot of very big words, even edited down by Mika. But, yeah. Can I, I hold can it, see. Koopa? Yes. It kind of starts, starts showing some of her favourite parts of the Chronicles of Vino. Near the best bits to Aeon in <laughs> Vino. <laughs> oh, and in this part, Natos is being really annoying, so Mika can't sleep and they left him in an alley somewhere. That seems, a little, that seems a little harsh. <laughs> they seem to give each other a lot of grief all the time. It was kind of their thing. Yeah, he mentioned that a lot. Sandra, Koopa. Yes? I want to do the scavenger hunt, Koopa. We need to do what Grandpa Thampy did, Koopa. Well, he's probably going to be rolling in his grave, but let's go. I mean, it is themed after him. Koopa! we got plenty of time to... Do all sorts for dark, and when it comes dark, Design Kane will kick off the fireworks displays and all that business. Hmm. Fireworks! No, no. So, yeah, Lord Design Kane will kick everything off. That'd be great. Yeah, well, well. If I have the travel view lot for the rest of the day, I may want to have a little, how do we say, agreement before I go along with this. <laughs> and that would be And I will follow you around and I suppose what you do your activities. But when it comes to night, I'm probably best gonna find a more peaceful place. Uh fireworks kinda of travel the the sound travels everywhere and you'll kind of see it everywhere on the island. They're big. Booms. You know, it, it's gunpowder exploding with magic. I'm aware. But as long as I'm not too close, I'm fine. Well, if you say so, though, don't expect to get peaceful night's rest right away. Hmm. You gotta... You gotta... Alright, I'll admit that deal. You gotta at least stay for Tazan's speech. You know, because that's like the big thing where he addresses the entire crowd, the fireworks start. After that, he won't stop you, you can stink away if you want. But you, you got to stay at least till the, the beginning of the finale, or you're missing out. Mm. I suppose, perhaps, when the music starts, I could stick around for that. If that's any close to the beginning of it. <gasps> Answers... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was my mom, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when Lord Kane and Tom come out onto stage and their speech concludes, that could be your moment to make yourself scarce. Until then, come on, have fun. You yeah, fish, come on. I will pout <laughs> at you. Very well. Just but your pouts mean mind. nothing to me. Then why <laughs> is it working? You know, I'm having a strange feeling I wasn't going to be too fond of you, and now I'm starting to see why, besides other features. 
<laughs> you are really mean. You know that. Who's your favorite, Koopa? You, Aeon. You. Yee, Koopa! So what activity are you doing next? Scavenger hunt! Scavenger hunt! Scavenger <laughs> hunt, Koopa! This way! The partygoers wind through the streets and eventually come to a side plaza of sorts, loaded with a bunch of kid-friendly constructions that resemble a slapped-together hybrid between the older, ramshackle architecture of Old Marasu and the sandstone blocks and squares of the city of Kurzatan, far to the southeast on the mainland, where the Dark Knight Thanatos was born. An Elvon man oversees the entrance. Oh, this is the place, look. Dampy. <laughs> Grandpa Dampy! The host of the game explains that the items that need to be found for the scavenger hunt are a towel that represents Thanatos' cloak, a toy scythe, and a bit of rope. Now, two of these three items are literally present in the form of Cassandra's scarf and spear, which were made from Thanatos' cloak and scythe, respectively. Rosa looks towards Cassandra. Does that count? <laughs> I was so mad cloak. because I was literally going to do the same line. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally going to go up to Cassandra's scarf and just start tugging it. It's like, I found some of it. <laughs> <laughs> It's the real thing's right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, might as well start looking. Should have, should have brought the scythe too, and it made this super easy. I can't breathe. You know, and at that, Cassandra actually pulls the spear off her back and shows it to Rosa. You know, technically, I have it right here. Oh. <laughs> Sandra is no safe, Koopa. You turned it into a spear? Yeah, when Grandpa died, he wanted it reforged, so we had... We have two of the three things board. already. We are awesome. We are kidding us. <laughs> yeah. So now I know why he never wanted rope in the house. Koopa. Koopa. <laughs> So many dark <laughs> <laughs> I say I'm just let Aeon have, have the lead. Yeah, I just say okay. Kanaz yeah, is sitting back and watching. Rose is too busy <laughs> just absolutely fangirling over the uh, the cape and the scythe. The real ones. <laughs> yeah, Kai's staying behind. She already had enough games, only even though the freaking arrow game it frustrated her kind of. <laughs> Aeon ventures into the scavenger hunting grounds, and on account of being an adorable moogle with weird markings, is soon being followed by basically all of the other children participating. <laughs> bit by bit, it goes from a competition to a concerted team effort, with a small army of children marching lockstep behind Aeon, combing through everything at his command. The scythe and the towel are found in short order. He even wears them, more or less cosplaying as Thanatos. But, much like great-grandpa Thampy before him, Aeon did not find rope. The one thing... The one thing she can't find is the rope. No. He can't find the rope. The tricky <laughs> rope strikes again! Uh, yes! <laughs> Vincent repeat! <laughs> Aeon, dressed as Thanatos, cannot find rope. I love this so much. <laughs> cannot find rope. Thanatos curse. <laughs> no, 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 wait, no. I can't find a rope, Koopa. I'm like Grandpa Dampy, Koopa! And, and you can just, and somewhere, wherever Thanatos is buried, you were just hearing this. <laughs> 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 this was a session one gag and it's still here. <laughs> because because you guys will not let it die. You have found <laughs> Honey, this is also going back to, it's on you again because when 
<laughs> you tell me, oh, like, oh, they recorded our D and D sessions and stuff like that. You know how much I died when I watched that first part. <laughs> you couldn't find Gro. <laughs> I think I watched that scene. <laughs> that was this cool barrel. <laughs> since you cannot find a such, <laughs> since you cannot find a simple rope, you are cursed forever to never find that rope. <laughs> Go on. This. Aeon returns to the group with the rope at this point, it having been found by a little Elvon girl. He's followed by the children, who are marching behind him in a honestly kind of cult-like procession. It's very cute and funny and kind of creepy. Aeon is rewarded with a silver token for his efforts, which he can turn in for a reward at a prize counter back in the main plaza. Oh my god. Sandra, I made friends, Koopa. I always figured you'd be a cult leader. <laughs> Koopa! I need to be a leader. This. Then I, I don't know why. I just got you just hear me. Aeon, I need to hug you again. Koopa hugs. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Out of character. <laughs> Children of the corn move over. Children of Morosu is in towns. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think, uh, considering that they all helped point to the kids, should we get, get them something? Because uh, lollipop each, maybe? I I do have lollipops. Oh, the connection check. <laughs> uh, Alright. Nego negotiation check, you said? Six, seven. Oh, okay. My ten, but sure. Six, seven, eight. I I like the idea of Aeon with like a little toy scythe. I actually, it's really adorable. Actually, you have you have that token, right? Koopa? Yes. I know, I know, I know a place where they sell like toy replicas of the various Warriors of Light weapons. <gasps> really, Koopa? Yeah, they usually set up because you know the kids like playing Warriors of Light. I I I did. <laughs> Koopa. Hey, Kayana, oh. <laughs> if you make the cape, we can use the token to get the scythe. Team this. Fine. <laughs> Thank you, Koopa. He just goes up to Kai and just gives him a, gives her a hug. She just like she's like okay. <laughs> I have to say, Ayana is the Sundare. <laughs> hmm. I have to say, you have quite impressive leading skills. Koopa, it's the first time I've been a leader, Koopa. Though. I do remember a lot of the kids liked me for some reason, Koopa. Gee, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Even though she's a little older, as if to illustrate the point, Wide-Eyed Rose is just creeping closer as if to hug again. <laughs> do you want another hug, Koopa? Yes. Yee! Just <laughs> launches to Rosa. <laughs> Following the scavenger hunt, the party makes their way back to the Twin Squares, where they briefly make a pit stop to participate in the Alistair themed cover event, where two teams compete to hurt each other with mud balls, or rather, hit each other. Each team has three players, one of which is designated as the team's protector, and it is their responsibility to intercept the enemy team's incoming mud balls. It's all very gross and very fun. Uh, it should be noted that we were kind of skimming for this bit, because I was wanting to get the players to the next major story event, so this was more like a, a an actual like pit stop. It only took us a few minutes fantasy. to go over, but here you go. <laughs> can we just... Can we just... I know it's just for everybody we're not actually going to do this. Like, Can we just say, like, for the Alistair, like, mud ball fight, that the one that pretty much... Like, who would have... Who would have wanted to participate in that one? Because I think Sandra would want to do that one. Would Aeon want to throw mud? On? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what about Kai? Sorry. Right. Huh? Would Kai want to throw mud at everybody? No. <laughs> <laughs> also, also while that. <laughs> While that's going on with uh, Cassandra not doing so well, Rosa is genuinely going to look to her and go, "You know, you don't, you don't have to make me feel better. You can actually try." 
<laughs> and she's not taking a dig at her, she's genuinely thinking that Cassandra is taking a dive. So, so can I just say that, like, after she says that, she's like, I am trying, and just, like, tries to throw another one, and it misses the other team completely, and hits either Kunara or Kai. <laughs> it's on the side. Oh. <laughs> I don't... I don't know who would be more pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. That is a good question. I mean, Maybe Roll. It would probably be easier to hit Kunara, though it would be more funnier if she hit Kai. Roll, though, since it's a 50 50, shouldn't it be a wall? Like, also evens. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> Critical. <laughs> what? Are you kidding? So that's Kai. Oh, dear. No. Oh, no. Uh -oh. I could imagine also Kanara just moved to the right a bit just to get out of the way. <laughs> Cassandra, you gotta hit Koopa! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Someone is about to get hit! <laughs> um, sorry, Kai. You got a five second head start. <laughs> I mean, technically, to, to, you'd have to jump into the pit to get to her. You could just see Kai just putting down her pistol. <laughs> she, I see she's got a long range. You don't have to get in the pit. Okay, she means she means business. Um, <laughs> I'd definitely say Kanar had a slight snicker at that. <laughs> of course, we actually got a laugh out of the dog. We saw that. Mm. And then this goes back to serious as soon as she speaks up. <laughs> You're not as grumpy as you pretend to be. Following the disastrous event with the mud balls, the party gets cleaned off by a few mage apprentices on hand and spend the next several hours just kind of milling about. As the sun is setting, the horns sound to announce the arrival of Isle Master Tazan Kane, the great grandson of Laren Kane, who is known historically to have been a friend and associate of the Warriors of Light. Oh, uh, that, that's the signal. They're going to be starting fireworks and speeches and all that stuff soon. We should get back to the square. I also um, want to say one thing. I think that Kai is giving Cassandra the freaking silent treatment. You know, for I one who claims to be an adult, you act like a child. Oh. You want your tail to be pulled right now? Whatever you say, kid. Rosa just approaches Kayana... Put a hand on her shoulder and use a purifying touch to take that burn. In the middle of the twin squares, a large, albeit temporary, stage has been erected. On it, Lord Tazan Kane and his court mage, Tom Uman, emerge. <laughs> so, can I, can I was just looking at Rosa, so I take it he's the important individual? Oh, that's Lord Tazan Kane, and that's. Uh, the white mage, the court white mage of the Isle, Tom Uman. Yeah, he, uh, he, he taught me about the cure spell, I know. Didn't he teach your, um, didn't he teach your Aunt Lemma? Yes. Is that her? Yes, uh, he was the original master of one, Mika Solwyn. Hmm. Glad Hello. I read my history. Well, well, Master Vise told me all about being a Watcher. She wasn't really all that into curative spells. So I had to turn to Master Uman for that one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, one and all, to the city of Marasu and the annual Dawn Festival. On this day, we celebrate the end of the Amber Tide, the dark days in which the sky turned as black as night, and the demonic servants of the god of darkness, Diabolos, stormed across our world, tearing down all that stood in their wake. One hundred years ago, the ember tide nearly tore our world asunder. Cities were razed to the ground, families torn apart, the very land itself stands irrevocably altered and scarred in the wake of that apocalypse. But for all of the carnage that was sown across the world, 
for all of the suffering there was, for all of the pain and the agony and the lives lost. I dare say, albeit with no intent to disrespect those who did suffer, that few suffered worse than the people of this city and this island. For even before the sky was swallowed with darkness, this very island was drowned beneath the waves. When the crystal of water hidden beneath, off of our shores, was shattered by Diablos' strongest servant, the Eidolon, Murasan. Countless people lost their lives that day. And those who survived would suffer greatly for years to come. Their homes obliterated, friends and family drowned amid the storm. They labored tirelessly in the Urusai just to scratch out a meager existence, never mind a living. But I do not say this to downplay nor dismiss the suffering of the rest of Eno. All were made to bear the burden of the demon's rampage, and all felt the relief of it when the sun returned, brought on by the death of Diabolus, when the heroes we now know as the Warriors of Light cut him down. Now let it be known to all and remembered forevermore that it was in this city that the Warriors of Light made their start. They began in these streets on our shores during the outbreak of a vile plague that turned men into monsters. And it was thanks to their return to these shores that anyone survived the day of the flood. And it was thanks to their heroism, their sacrifices, and their valiant efforts that our fair city was raised from the waves to be built anew. And indeed, it was here, amid the ruins of our old city, as we labored to rebuild our homes and our lives, that Neothil and Mika Solwyn became married, their wedding hosted within the crumbling halls of the old castle. To the warriors of light we owe everything we have today. For were it not for their sacrifices and trials, their efforts, the world would have been consumed in a darkness from which there would be no awakening. And so, to those heroes of Eld, and to the one who yet lives, down in the forests of old Vatea, we have commissioned this song in their dedication. A song of remembrance, a song of hope, a song of our souls looking ahead to a brighter future. I pray you all enjoy the coming festivities and that you all walk eternally in the light of the crystals. Yes? After the speech concludes, a large band emerges onto the stage mm -hmm. and begins to play a song dedicated to the Warriors of Light, okay. their escapades, what else would have been? their adventures, <laughs> and their accomplishments. It's a beautiful song, and the crowd is enthralled by it, mesmerized by the memories and the stories of that bygone age. But as the song is playing, something catches the eyes of the party. A collection of caged carnival animals not so far away, who Rosa knows are slated to perform for the masses as part of the next day's festivities, like a carnival show. But something is amiss with the cages. Critical success. Bust. Bro. Bro, I got a crit. I almost, yeah. I almost got a crit. <laughs> Yeah, too many. Aeon got pretty good too. Damn. <sighs> now I just need from Doc. Eleven. So, friend, Eleven and Ari. Oh, uh, I think she might have been called away. With her critical success awareness roll, Rosa catches sight of a man sprinting away from the caged lions to vanish into the streets beyond. Meanwhile, the lions themselves have been freed from their cages oh my and appear God. to have been provoked into hostility. Oh, no. I climb on. I'm too fluffy. I climb onto Fluffy's back, to get a, get a look, and can I see the lions? 
Is that correct? Are they wearing a red robe? No. Can I get any details? Unfortunately, Rosa is unable to glean any meaningful details about the withdrawing figure, as things descend into chaos just a little too fast. Oh, seeing this, I just I literally stand on top of Fluffy, so I'm clearly visible, specifically by those on the stage. I kind of point... Oh, because I'm having the crowd's also quite silent at this point, aside from the music. Um, I, I point... I point over in that direction to show, Master Aman, the lions! It is at this point that the lions emerge from their cages and bound into the crowd. The people scatter and sprint in a panic, like looking for safety. Angry. Four of the lions bound to the side of the stage that the party stands on. And so they do what they must, and leap into the fray to engage the oncoming angry felines. Well, Sandra, kitties! Yeah. Oh my god! And we got some bad kitties coming. Oh? Oh, look at the picture. <laughs> well, this escalated quickly. Aeon? Yes, Sanja? Time to do a bit of hero work. Yay! You, oh you be God. a good boy, and I'll be right back. And Cassandra uses jump. <laughs> Rosa is going to drop from her standing position, having worn Tom. Uh, sit on Fluffy, and these guys, these guys look pretty close to the crowd, so she's, she's going to pat Fluffy, point at them, and go... Fluffy! Step on them! <laughs> oh my god. Which... Um... I must point out I don't see the total of Aeon's health. Yeah, we don't see Aeon's health. Yeah, we don't see Aeon's health. Yeah. I'm dead! <laughs> no, you're the unknown. <laughs> we, the bar, we just can't see how much hit points. <laughs> Aeon is oh, dead? God. Aeon's dead. Why is the Aeon dead? The Aeon is not. I'm concerned. Right, that's <laughs> Aeon has an imagination. Anyway, so, so probably Kanar's gonna go after them. Well, first I need to roll for my damage. I haven't done that yet. Uh, it's part of it's the animal companion aggressive trait. So once per combat, Fluffy can deal highest attribute times nature. I'm on Fluffy, so that's nature has an extra plus two as well. <laughs> for an, with an opposed roll for blindness, it is armor damage, non elemental. So, first the damage is. That's five. 40 points of damage. That would do it. <sighs> Alright. Um, I mean, you. Four saying great, so we'll see. Oh, give me a moment. Five, six, seven. If it's matched, do we reroll? No. Oh no, what do you get? Oh no. Oh, I'm, I'm screwed to show a critical success. I can't match that. I got 12, but no. Just slicey slice. Hopefully. Let's see what I can do. Okay, that's not bad. Let's see, so adding a 8 to my... Oh. How does 13 look? Foolish fellow felines, prepare to meet your demise. <laughs> the dog <laughs> is beating up the cat. How... fitting. As long as it's that cat and not this cat. <laughs> <laughs> so power mm. yep it is and that would be 15 damage in total because it's plus 10 okay. so what does the Aeon do unfortunately Aeon can't do much so <laughs> now it's got magic. Yes. I have technically one spell I can use. 
I don't. I can't use the other one. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't have enough MP. <laughs> I'm still a babu in time magic. <laughs> yes, but you do. You do have one spell. I do, and if I do it, is it gonna hurt? Is it just hurt the enemies, or is this gonna hurt the crowd too? No, you just. Okay, I just want to be sure before I cause catastrophe and death. I don't want to do this right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, despite that, All the right. picture that we have of Aeon is him just causing a Look, hole. I'm going to cause it right now! I'm going to cast Meteorite! <laughs> okay. And that hits. dresses Thanatos just rocked up and started throwing darkness-colored fireballs at people. <laughs> Behold! Comet Purples! <laughs> Gumballs! <laughs> it's a warrior of light reborn. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's 27. Okay, so 27. God, what if Thanatos reincarnated as a middle? Shut up. <laughs> Ooh. Unpleasant of oh, this. No. Alright. And now we down. Can you put X's on the ones that are down just so we don't get confused? One's vanished. Ah. There we go. <laughs> oh god. Ooh, kitty! Oh, oh no. Yeah, kitty gun. Well, yeah, that absolutely gets okay. on. Anino! Sandra's a kitty! Yes, the kitty. And how much damage does the kitty do? No! Go <laughs> No. <laughs> no, don't, don't worry. Cassandra will be coming down at the beginning of our next turn. Ah, it's... Ow! <laughs> I feel like this is personal with that line. Cat fight! Goddammit, <laughs> 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 son. <laughs> Oh, no. What I do? I need to roll. I need to roll five and a six to at least match it. I didn't roll that. I did not roll that at all. <laughs> One and a two. <laughs> it's, it's turn now. Ow! Tactical nuke incoming. <laughs> Cassandra will land on the one that just attacked Aeon. I do, and let's see, so that's minus one, so let's see, because of the thing, let's see. Ah! Well, fuck, damn it, I forgot I don't have a blade anymore, damn it. <laughs> no, that's without it, so... Six. It's minus one, so it's six. I know. So, well then, if he doesn't want to be speared, let's try something else. Again, uh, uh... you all are forgetting Dragoon. So how, let's see how these things like fire. I do okay, believe I still. Oh yeah, they do, don't they? Here, let me let me double check that. Uh, deep breath. Uh, short range. Oh no! Oh, range Does that mean you hit Aeon? Uh, no. I was gonna short, say. Short range enemies. Uh, do I still do I still need to roll accuracy for it? Oh, they do require a successful accuracy roll. But okay, so yeah, I do need to still roll. So this will hit both of the lions. So again, let's roll this and then uh, just I'll just take away the one right here. Come on, dice. Are you fucking kidding me? Wow. Fuck you, dice. Feel my pain. This is can bullshit. I, can I fire an arrow at the one I can directly see ahead of me? Non-lethal, like I'm aiming for, um... 
Well, well what would be a non lethal shot? It's kind of hard to non lethal on arrow. <laughs> It's freaking. Um, quick question. So you just hit a joint. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> Feel my pain. Level one. Level one. That's like Level two one. In a row and anyway. It's the same dice. I'm gonna Where take a it? take my crappy bow off my shoulder. I'm going to attempt to get it in a joint just to kind of immobilize it. This is minus one, so it's only a plus one. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm having I'm having immediate flashbacks to the mud pit. <laughs> the mud pit. Shut up. And don't mind me, I was just seeing if I can make the distance up. Six, that is up. Five, six, six, four, five, six, seven. Uh, Sixteen. Got one! I'm still in pain! <laughs> Impressive shot. So, I leave it to the range to shoot, finish this one off. <laughs> Go, Kai! Uh, so hopefully, the dice will actually be nice to us then. Feel my pain! I feel your pain. The dice are being bullshit right now. I know, right? I mean, I have an idea if, like, something doesn't... If, if, if all else fails. Can, can, hey, on. can, can I that. please try something? <laughs> I want to be a troll. <laughs> I'm bad oh, doing no. this, though. Oh, no. <laughs> I need to ask if Darkness has something, though. Do you still have that fish? Oh, no. <laughs> you never... <laughs> I mean, first you have to get it off Kanara. <laughs> Can I use telekinesis to get the fish off Kanara and just launch it so the, the lion goes and runs away and eats the fish? No. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh oh. Do I want to do this? <laughs> we love you, Are Ion. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought of the idea in my head, and I'm like, I don't know if I want to uh, do this or not. So this is the <laughs> telekinesis can use. Telekinesis can use items as improbable weapons. Oh. <laughs> mm. so just going to be... hit the lion in the face with a fish. Anything that's going to be the spanner in the works of this campaign. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be Kunara's chew toy, I really am. <laughs> Again, can you get the fish? Alright, let's try it. I, I it's it's saying thievery. <laughs> Well, that's why I'm not giving her an option. I'm taking it. Aeon's being yeah. like, oh, I know. Fish, cats like fish. And he's just like, mm -hmm. Kanara has a fish, takes the fish off of her. Yeah. All right. He... All right. Yeah. Uh... You, <laughs> you actually did put some character, deep. She definitely wouldn't. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah. I'm scared because I had that. Ooh, it was pet. Let's see. Nine. Nine. You need to be a nine. So what I'm rolling against this, though? Awareness. Ah. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> nine. Now, Kanala, if you lose your fish, do not get angsty. <laughs> <laughs> That's the. <laughs> no, right. I feel like that was on purpose. Roll. Balls. <laughs> <laughs> I missed! <laughs> I can't the right! I know that oh, when, when he was playing Kalasa, he was just playing himself. Oh, <laughs> shit, that's a high wall. Uh -oh. Yeah, and then his awareness is probably high, so... Oh, well. that's a oh no! Just that roll. Yeah, no, you okay. In total, that would be... Flat on 12. Yeah, no. <laughs> or at the try. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Use your own powers on the enemy, not my fish. It was a plan. It was going to work. The kitties are hungry. That's why they're mad, Goofo. You get why angry you when you're mad. Why do you think I clobber the one next to me? It's not taking my fish. Maybe that's why you're such in a bad mood, Koopa, you haven't eaten. <laughs> that is part of the reason, yes. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, she can't quite... She's out of range. Kitty. I was seeing the fact that her fish was almost used as a projectile. <laughs> Or you don't have any long range weapons attacks nope. either. <laughs> Can I just pace out? <laughs> <laughs> She's just gonna stand here in the back, just keep her. She's not like glaring at me. <laughs> hey, my fish is. Yep. <laughs> He's like, nope. Mine! Go ahead. Redeem yourself. Redeem myself, Dice. I swear. So, again, I am trying... And you still got the bonus, I believe. Right. I'm just going to go for my spear. Now, Dice, I swear to God. There you go. Thank there you. you. Go. Congrats. Yes, power is eight. That would do it. Well, so seeing the first as, one. Yeah. So seeing as this one is just slowly coming towards Kaya, she Cassandra just gets to the side of it like quick before it even notices and I'm like, yeah no. And then clunks it on top on the back of the head with her spear. And with that, the remaining lions are pacified into unconsciousness. Those on the other side of the stage are soon put down by the Lord's various bodyguards and the efforts of Tom Uman. Back a light. So Rosa is just crouched down by Fluffy, clutching her arm, which has a big claw mark of blood coming from it. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> Ow! <laughs> okay, who let the cats out? Oh my god. And Cassandra will, Cassandra will slowly walk over to Rosa. Rosa! <laughs> How this, you feeling, kid? This really hurts. Uh, give me a... Rosa's gonna place a hand on the ground, and you see little motes of green light almost like drawn from the surface, from like little weeds, bits of plants that are poking through the cobble. Coming up her arm, traveling across her body and into her towards her wound, where it begins to close as she casts cure on herself. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 points of healing. I pull. And then Cassandra looks over to Aeon. Did it hurt? <laughs> I didn't hear you. Sorry, she, Cassandra looks over to Aeon. So does it hurt? Does what hurt, Koopa? The claw mark. Aeon. Oh, it stings a bit, Koopa. Not too bad. She hands him over a potion. Here you go. Yee. Oh. That... That was a nice... Uh, I well, never... That's kind of the whole point of a fight. It's not meant to be nice. I've never been here like that before. <laughs> I, mean, I can see that the way you're taking it. I, I'm fine. <laughs> um, there were more on the other side. That's the time. Rosa is running that direction. Rosa checks in with Tamu Man informing him that Cassandra's Shadow Grasp is in town and helped with pacifying lions on the other side of the stage. Tam is intrigued by this and is eager to speak with the woman once things have calmed down. Rosa is eager to help with Tam's patience, but Tam encourages her to save her strength 
and let the guards and Tam do their job. It is while this conversation is happening that the rest of the party is approached by a scholar who calls himself Elfric Manamichi. The man that you spotted running away was a thief. For reasons I do not yet know, he pickpocketed my Tome of Communion off of me, a magic item that enables me to communicate with a colleague of mine back on the mainland for the sake of a shared research project. I spotted the thief making off with my property and tried to stop him, but the thief, an aging Mithrin male in leather armors and carrying a wicked-looking dagger, managed to open the lion's cage and provoked them by throwing a stone in at them, thus providing an adequate distraction he could exploit to make his getaway. I would like my property back, and I was rather impressed with how you all handled the situation. I saw you fighting. It was remarkable stuff. And so I would be more than happy to pay handsomely for you to get after that thief and retrieve my Tome of Communion. I would go after him myself, but I am no fighter. I am a scholar. I do plan to go to the city guard, but it will take them time to go through their investigations and ask questions and seek witnesses and tend to the wounded and make sure everything is safe, and that will give the thief more time to get away. By sending you as an advance party, perhaps you can get ahead of the curve and retrieve what is mine more swiftly. All right. And... Yes, Koopa? Time to go time to go teach that guy that stealing is bad. Teach who? Who's what's bad? Raza, just in time. We need a local to take us to the northern gate of the city. Uh, There's why? a thief, Koopa. Never mind the thief, there was there was this guy, I saw him, he opened the cages. Yeah, that's our thief. Oh. Oh my. Um <clears throat> Well, I mean, I can lead you towards the north gate, and maybe we can see if anyone saw this guy. Um, Go! Up. Kayana, are, are you in on this? I have nothing better to do. Fine. Kanara, um, I, I know we said we'd let you go at this point, but you wanted to go towards the trees, and that's kind of where we're heading now, and there might be a thief at Living Lions loose there. If I must help you with this petty thief, I have a request. As you do. Name it. Can I put this fish somewhere where it's not going to get potentially stolen or damaged? Go up. Well, let's see, if we have to go outside the city, we'll find a place to cook it, so don't worry about it. And Aeon? Yes, Sandra? What did we talk about stealing from friends? I don't remember, Koopa. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> mm. We ask permission first. About. Fine. Um, Although, since we're getting back his book, how about you hold on to the fish, since you're not much of the fighter? <laughs> wait, wait, you're going to give the I, guy I, I, the fish? Can, Miss Kanara, I don't, I don't think he's coming with us. He's not Exactly, with us. so he's in the best, safest place, as long as he doesn't do it. And then you can't cook it, and it, it, might be, it might not be fresh when we get back. <sighs> also, you're just, you're just giving the guy a fish. I mean, I'll cook mm. it for you when we get. Oh yes, you have fire breath. That was awesome. How do you do that? Teach me. Nice. That's you a see, good point. See if you want. You want to learn how to breathe fire? <laughs> All right then. Use that fancy ability of yours, and we got a deal. Fine. Cook the fish. <laughs> I want to see it again. That was so cool. You're awesome. Can I say you're awesome? But if I cook it for you, I get half of it. <sighs> oh! I got a bargain. Oh, also, um... I suppose, Man? since you're sort of a chef at this point now, I suppose, as long as you don't commit it. Yeah. Guess Besides, I'm... she gets to see your trick, I get my fish, it's a win-win. Yep. Get to cooking. 
Uh, yeah, uh... We'll cook to... outside the city, because I have a uh, feeling this guy didn't stay. Guys, uh, Master, Master Uman wants also to meet with us later. Who? Okay. Um, Uman. You know, we talked about him earlier. Oh, Numao. the old man my grandpa saved from drowning? Yeah, that's the one. He, he wants to meet with us later. Why? Hmm. Well, one, because... Points towards an unconscious line. Also, I told him that the shadow grass was in, and he seemed kind of interested. I'm not gonna get a lot of that here, are I? Sandra's popular, Koopa. <laughs> For once. All right, <laughs> come on, let's go find us a thief. I need no. something to kick. No, okay, it's this way. So. Do you, do you have a, like a special roundhouse kick kind of thing that you do? Uh, kind of a martial arts fighting style, or...? No, I usually just drop down from the sky and kick them in the back. Awesome. You missed. So, so awesome. It... It was crowded, and things were happening. But you never miss. I know, there's something about this city that just ruins it. This place is cursed. It's the rope. <laughs> Cassandra is now going to stomp her way towards the gate. <laughs> well, the way is they walk in. I, 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 she's stomping so... away. I, I, she's stomping away because um, she's just stomping ahead. She gets, uh, it's, it's the other street. It's that way. I know where I'm going. She turns to the right street. No, she doesn't! <laughs> this guy gives Aeon a little flick on his palm. Ow! <laughs> the party leaves the city, receiving directions from a few people who witnessed the fleeing thief, notably a fellow Tarufel who gives the information to Kayana. The thief departed the city on Chocoba back, pulling a wagon along behind him just before the city gates would close for the night. As the darkness of the night sets in, Rosa steps through the city gates for the first time in her life. Rosa is going to immediately look for Chocobo tracks, something she'd actually know about, nature and stuff. <laughs> and wagon tracks most likely are around. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. Rosa's very good at nature, she is... Kind of a thing. Um, which is, if you remember how Nii, despite being an Elven Ranger, had like a, a very low nature score, like what, two by the end of the campaign? Kind of tops with better at it. Six, two. And actually, Thanatos was the most naturous one. Yeah. Oh, I got the tracks, they're going this way. So, how much no sort of head start do you think this guy's got on us? Uh, he's on Chocobo, and I don't think Fluffy can carry us all. I'm just grateful to be out of the city. Now I can actually breathe normally. Well, I oh. guess we're... I guess we're gonna need a little extra help. The tracks left by the thief's retreat head north along one of the numerous dirt paths that crisscross across the island. On account that Marasu is the only large city on this isle, well-maintained highways and paved roads would be something of a waste of resources and money. The various smaller villages and hamlets across the isle, mostly along the shore, are connected by well-worn dirt paths that follow routes of natural convenience, and our thief is following one headed north. And you all see Cassandra pull out a whistle. No! I, I, am, I am confused. No! Koopa, no! Aeon? No, Koopa! <laughs> Aeon, he can help. No, Koopa, he's a jerk, Koopa! He's what is jerk. happening? <laughs> he is not a jerk, he can help. He'll no. find the guy. No! <laughs> the first time I see the Moogle refusing. Aeon, you're not being fair. Sandra, no. Oh no. I'll buy you all the ice cream you want when we get back. No ice cream from that jerk. Um, look, 
I want to get this over with as soon as possible. So how about this? You let your friend do his thing, and I... Mm, depart with some of my fish to you once it's all over. No. Well, I tried. And, uh, like, <laughs> Cassandra just pulls him in close. And we talked about this. Please? For me? Fine, Koopo. All right. And as with that confirmation, you all see her go to blow it, but you don't hear anything. Well, besides a twitch of an eye pitch, is there a point to it? Just give him a minute. <laughs> In response to Cassandra's whistle, a figure descends from the night sky. A baby dragon with a long, noodle-like no. body, not unlike an eastern dragon, who is currently no larger than a scarf, and bears massive draconic wings like those of a western dragon on his back. He arrives at Cassandra's side with a graceful flap. He has bright teal scales, pale brown membranes, pale yellow horns, piercing ocean blue eyes, and a red feather-like flare on the end of his whip-like tail. Long whiskers billow from his cheeks in a manner, again, similar to the eastern dragons. Aeon looks at this dragon with bitter contempt. Whoa. Do you oh. have a tiny dragon? So. <laughs> she just kind of goes up and pat, pats him on the head. Everyone? Meet Tiermir. Tier for short. Tyr, these are our new friends. This, she points to all of them. Rosa, Kayana, and Kunara. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. Uh, are you a dragon? Yes, I'm a dragon. You are so awesome! Um, are, you, are you a baby dragon? Are you... Do you, do you breathe fire? Do you breathe ice? How, how, do you, what kind of element are you? Uh, In response to Rosa's barrage of questions, Tyr ducks behind Cassandra's yeah, legs to dragon. hide. This well, is a yes. dragon? I was expecting something more, but fair It's a baby enough. dragon? You are adorable. Well, baby's a little stretching. I'd say more adolescent at this stage. And to answer your... Yeah. Oh, great. But he's, but he's growing. Another child joins the group. <laughs> Yeah, you can see Kai just like slowly turning. <laughs> you better anyway, be sure with that look. Anyway, Cassandra leans down to look him and Tear in the eye. Tear, I got a favor to ask you. What do you need? See, we're we're checking a thief. A thief? He ran. He ran out of the city on Chocobo in a wagon. But he's got a bit of a head start on us. Think you could fly ahead and see if you can find it? Sure, I can do that. But I won't be getting close. With that, Tyr flies off to go after the thief. You are so cool. Yeah, I know. <laughs> is, he, is he like an adventure dragon? Does he have an army of frogs? <laughs> <laughs> Frogs? God damn it, Tom. <laughs> Same. I don't get the reference, so... To answer your question, yes, he is, I guess, say an adventure dragon? He follows us around. He, We just don't take him into crowded cities because people tend to go, Oh my god, it's a dragon! What? what? Okay, one... How did, you, how did you think up with a dragon, a baby dragon, to Aeon, why do you not like the baby dragon? Well, I can answer the first question. I got him as, I wouldn't call it a gift, more as a... Mistake, Koopo? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> not expect this. More as a favor 
for the dragon that's in charge of the dragoons back home. Are you a babysitter? I mean, that's not the word I would use, but in a sense, yes. You are the coolest babysitter. I know. So, yeah, <laughs> I've I hatched him from an egg, and I'm kind of raising him. I would have named him Spike. <laughs> I mean, that's a very generic name, and he's not a dog. <laughs> and to answer your other question, yes, he does breathe fire. Very cool fire, actually. My, my, my other question was, what's the deal with Aeon? Well... It's complicated. Does Aeon say anything to that? No, he's just crossing this little stubs and not saying anything. Aeon, is something wrong? Mm. Don't be sad. Kupal starts poking him in the cheeks. He's no! Are you happy, Oak? No, stop! Oak. No more! Oak. <laughs> Give you a lollipop. I don't want a lollipop! Okay, this is serious. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this... Well, let's just say that... Oh. Let's just say there's issues. <laughs> he said now. He did the thing. Okay, um... Okay, so... Tear, was it? Yes. Who was following the track? This is, this is... This has been a day. We're following the tracks. Tear's going on ahead, since he can fly and see a lot better in the dark than we can. Can I just say that I, I woke up today not even thinking I'd go to the festival, and then I got to go to the festival, and I, I met... A pseudo relation I never thought I'd actually get to meet. Found out where my great grandmother is. Met a bunch of weird adventurers and got dragged into fight with some lions. And now I'm following the tracks after a thief who tried to kill a bunch of people. Who's, there's also a dragon. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Kind of just an everyday thing for me. Your days are awesome. Oh. Have I said that yet? Um, I'm gonna count probably about. Maybe four or five times at this point. A few? I just say it more. Yeah, I I was saying something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I assume so. So we're walking just, and talking. I, I didn't have Aeon in the far back. Just, <laughs> yeah, I, so did, I was, does I was Kai does Kai or Kunara have any words about the dragon? No. <laughs> no. Well, it's like yeah, it's just a dragon. <laughs> I was gonna well, Kai do something that she normally never does, but for Aeon. What's that? Hold on. And then she goes, okay. So Kai is seeing that Aeon's upset about the dragon, so she's like, Aeon? Kofo. <laughs> she just holds out her arms. Come on. She's like hey. giving her, a, trying to give her, give him a hug. Aww. I don't want a hug right now, Kupo. Aww. Aww. It was an offer, just let me know. Thank you, Kupo. You're welcome. Normally I never do that. And. <clears throat> What is the deal with this Moogle and this dragon? <laughs> like, there is some never, deep shit got there. Powerful, I'll try to make you make him feel better. All I was gonna say was, despite the first time meeting a dragon, definitely not what I was expecting. To be honest, from what I heard, they're capable of, or even the size. Again, he's a baby. The one, 
You should see his mother. About the size of a building. Now that's more like it. Hmm. So, he's been traveling with you for how long? He's been with us... Oh, just let me check the back... Let me check the backstory and just... Make sure I don't want to say too long. <laughs> say too long. Um... Uh, she got here at the age of... What? Is that even saying? Uh, 20. Uh, yeah, so around 22 is when she got him. Oh. 20, uh, uh, 23 when he hatched, so he's been oh, two to three years now. After a while of following the tracks north, Tiermith returns, explaining to the group that the thief followed the road north for a time before breaking away as the path turned west, and the thief cut north through the wilderness. It was at this time that Tyr lost track of him, and he vanished into a copse of trees. Well, at least we know the direction he's going. Though if he, keep, if he keeps heading north, he's gonna hit the ocean. Yeah, it's, it's here's an island, so it's not... Unless he has a boat waiting. But I don't recall no. any docks here, so it would be a bit precarious if it's up against cliffs. Yes, but as eager as we are to catch this thief, I have to point out it's getting late. Ah, uh, yeah, and my magic reserves are kind of tapped. True. After one spell, it, it's not saying it reflects that often. For reasons I think I've explained. Hmm. True, and after that, it's getting late, and Tyr had a long flight, I doubt we'll have much more out of him. He just kind of scratches his head while he's laying on her shoulder. We should... <laughs> That's adorable. Um, so we should probably set up a, a watch? At least that's what they did in the book. They, they used to have like a rotation. Seems, seems like a good idea, because there are things out here that want to eat us, and I've had enough of that today. You do that. I find my own cozy spot, thanks. I will Besides, point... I still got this to cook. Well, you, you wanted the fire lady to do that, and you can't do that What if you go into the forest alone where things will eat you as you sleep. A nice fire would keep them at bay. <laughs> Take it from the local. No, it won't. Not all of them. Look, Kanara, I get you want to be alone, but from where we are in unknown territory, it's probably best to just hunker down together. I'm not too far, just a, no distance away. I prefer my own personal space. All right. So don't worry, I won't wander off. Just scream, I guess, if you need help. Somewhat. I'll be a little bit skewed a bit, but pretty much close by if ever they need help. That's what I was going to say. And besides, someone needs to keep you on your feet. I guess. Okay. She kind of walking off to do her own thing then? Mm-hmm. Right. Once she's out of your shot. Um, wait, I'm trying with her. I kind of... I mean, she looks really strong and all that, but I'm trying to like her, but she's kind of mean. Well, you have to understand, Rosa, that she's from a far off land. I know, I was wondering if it makes her so interesting, but she's just kind of... Like I'm trying to be friendly, I'm trying to... Uh... I don't know. Maybe it would almost be better if we just let her go off and do her own thing. We can't control what she does forever. Mm -hmm. Come on. We gotta set up camp. You have camp before, right? Yeah, uh, that's the... Normally men have tents or something? Isn't that a thing? 
Not when you're out roughing in the woods. This kind of pats her on the back. Come uh, on, kid. I'm gonna show you how it's done. I'm not a kid. I'm 19. Is so that you still a kid to me? Feel <laughs> my pain. <laughs> I may say at this time, but they hear like scraping and like pecking coming from where Kanara is. Wait, what? But also clicking and clacking of the flint that she's been carrying around. <laughs> oh, I guess like doing the typical like shh with the sword, yeah. just keeping it sharp. Yeah. Flint, oh, is... great for sharpening blades, but also good to start a fire. This is different. Like campaign one, the group got along pretty quickly. So they didn't have had this kind of. Well, even Thanatos wasn't this like antisocial. Well, no, campaign one. The only time we had an intergroup drama really was uh, when Thanatos went out, slightly went off the rails in his arc. But this, yeah. is, this is different. They're grouped together where not everyone gets along. <laughs> yeah, you may. Have... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, true, you've basically got us a nice food and a lot, but it still takes a bit more than that to I, know. Earn, I guess put on trust. I'm just I'm just saying it's an interesting dynamic compared to mm. uh, different from last time. Yeah, I did not expect Aeon to give anyone the cold shoulder. That's Yeah. Interesting. That caught me off doesn't, that, doesn't that make you curious? <laughs> It definitely makes me curious. As so, for Kanara, I suppose even she may build that curiosity over time because for all this time, she just sees this Moogle friendly, taking part in activities, making friends, and then this one little dragon shows up. Mm -mm. Nope. And it's like, hmm? <laughs> just like, what? I take it Aeon is even. Oh, because Tia's sticking around, I take it Aeon is just staying away. Pretty much. So, um, so if we're doing this, that, that watch thing, who's going to take first? Well, Rosa, thank you for volunteering. Well, I, I, I didn't, <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I've, ne I've never done this before. I mean, what if I miss? What if a monster comes up and eats me and then eats you? Oh. To put finger on lips. Rosa? Yeah. Just watch the horizon if you hear anything see anything or feel anything that's maybe watching you wake me up okay <laughs> okay yeah yeah sure um fluffy you you help right yeah go <laughs> see, two yeah. pairs of eyes Okay. Yeah. Please, I'll get this sleep. Now I did return back for a brief while. Here. I know you didn't cook it, but I promised at least half, so take it. Okay, so he just gives half the fish. Mm. So, yeah. Cassandra makes another fire with her fire breath, then just starts cooking the fish. Um... And Kayana, I mean, I get why they're here, and even Kunara a bit, it's just kind of... Yeah, Kai was, like, on a, a log or a rock or something, just, like, writing something. And she was not basically paying attention. So why are you tagging along on this? I mean, you were here for the festival, I mean, what what's going on there? Um, that's my favorite thing. Huh. I don't want to talk. So, Rosa. Yeah. You know, you didn't have to come with us outside the gate. You need a guide, and I've never actually gotten the opportunity. And, oh shit. Cassandra raises an eyebrow. Uh. My parents kind of lost. They were. They're gonna, they're gonna hear about the lying attack, and I did not coming home. Night. Yeah. Here I thought I avoided my inevitable execution. 
Yeah, last time that me and Aeon didn't show up for dinner, my mom had a fit. And let me tell you, as sweet and as calm as my mother is, <sighs> that Shadowgrass anger has a way of sneaking into every bit of the family. You, you might not think it, but the Solwins also have a real big temper. Mika Solwin killed Rosan. Neat. So, yeah, um, kind of runs in the family, so I'm definitely dead when I, I get back. So, that means I'm locked in library or home, never to see the light of day again, so I'm going to enjoy actually getting out and doing a proper adventure while I can, even though it hasn't entirely gone how I thought it might. So, let me get this straight. You've never left Marasu at all? No. Not to see family or anything? Uh, no, especially that. I mean, don't you have family of the day? Grandma knees there. I think, I think I have an uncle. I'm not entirely sure. I think I'd be sure. I told you before, remember? Mum and Dad. Ebony and Tom Lee, um, then they, like I said before, they don't like me delving too deep into the whole, like, when I first met you, I told my, my full name is Solwyn Athil, they don't like me using that last part, it's just Solwyn, because, I, I, I said, remember, I mean, mum my, my, and dad died, I don't know what happened, I don't know why it happened, I don't know why they have such just hatred for anything to do with the name of Phil or Warrior of Light or any of it, but they try really hard to keep me away and it's just like the biggest berserk button for them. They live in a city where there's literally a statue of them. Oh, they know it <laughs> and they hate it. I mean, they, they run Mika's books on like it's, it's weird. They don't... I never got the sense it was Mika, again, it's it's more towards like me and the hills and Vite and Rangers and That's still a part of your family. I know, and that's why I'm so excited to meet you. I mean your shit your shadow grasp shadow that also was my mother's godfather, which makes me my god grandfather, I think, or something. So you you're like the first family beyond mum and dad I've met. And I've been waiting for you for my life. And just a chance. And I wanna... I want to go with you. Go with... Me. You're an adventurer, right? You're gonna go out there, maybe Anoma, maybe Vite someday. I've been waiting for a chance, and you're it! I mean... There's not a sign that there's shadow graphs that you walking in. Running into me in an alleyway. You do understand what that entails, don't you? I. I leave mum and dad. You leave I could them, have. And you put yourself in danger. Let's say one little scratch from a lion is going to be the least of your problems out there. It is. You're exaggerating. I'm exaggerating. I mean, I could have... I know what it means, alright? I mean, I could have... At any point, just bought a ticket, hopped on a ship, and just gone. I mean, I'm... I have Vitae citizenship. I was born there. I was born in Vitae. I could have just gone. Not told anyone. And... I have as much right to be there as I am here. And why didn't you? Because they're my parents. Cousins, technically, but this, they... I love them. And, uh, it fills me dread to think what they think, but... I'm not happy here. I need... I don't... They won't tell me what I need to know, and I need to know. It's like a golden cage, isn't it? It's nice, but you still want to be free. Yes. They're giving me everything I need, but... 
I need more than it can give me. Or there want to, to give me. Leaving your home is never easy. But at least you're given a choice. You mentioned something about Carla. We better go get some sleep. Start your watch and wake me up in two hours. So can I? Come with you. How about this? Survive this little thief encounter with us. And I'll think of it. All right. After I have a word with your parent. No, can, can, no, can we skip that? Maybe I just. I don't want to hurt them. I don't know how I can get away with both. You can't just leave without telling them. Yes. You need to face it, Rosa. Or you'll hurt them and yourself. What if they say no? What if they say no? You're 19. You have a choice. 20 in four days, actually. Even so, even more so. If they can't accept that, that's on them. But you need to learn to live your own life. <laughs> I, need, I want to know. And if they won't tell me. <sighs> I know one person who can. You've got until we get <sighs> back to make up your mind. Oh, I'll, I'll take that watch now. Um, he mm -hmm. gets up and starts walking away, clearly trying to hide the fact that he's just started crying. Was I too hard on her too? I don't think so, no. You just said what needed to be said. To this day, I still don't know if she sees it, what she saw in me. Kinda looks over to where Mayon is. What's that? Is Aeon just sitting somewhere, or is he asleep? Uh... Guess he's just like laying opposite away from you against like bark of the tree, I'd say. Cassandra gets up and kind of moves to lay next day on. She just comes up behind him and just slowly just wraps an arm around him to hold her, hold him close to her chest. <laughs> that night, Kunara is beset by a strange dream. A dream of moonlight and distant howls. Of a whispering voice and cryptic words. She awakens in a fright, nearly cleaving a tree down with her blade as the sun rises on Fenora. Following this, the group gathers their things and ventures forth to continue their pursuit of the thief. This is where we ended this session. So, again, I'm very sorry for my mistake and that this much editing had to be done in post just to make the episode watchable, but alas, it's a bit too late to fix it properly now, so this will have to do. Uh, with all that said, thank you very much for tuning in. Next time will be better, I promise. And until then, take care and keep listening. Bye.